What intrigues you about John K. Hiller's photography? The Hiller's photos are very um, authentic depictions of Western or Southwestern United States in 1880, roughly. And I'm amazed at what he is able to include in, a, in one single photo. It's everything from a river to the farms to a pueblo, a village, and then you can look beyond that and you can see canyons and you can see mountain peaks. There's a wealth of information in Hiller's photos. Who was he? What was his previous photography like? He was not a, a photographer. He had been a boatman for John Wesley Powell when he was conducting his exploration and coming down the Colorado River. And he, there were other photographers in that expedition. So Hillers learned from those photographers about photography. So he photographed the Grand Canyon and also the Canyon de Chez? He photographed the Grand Canyon, he photographed the Northwest, he photographed Yellowstone and other places before there was development. It depicts the people, the towns, and what I call the geographical landscape before it was mined, leveled, or destroyed. How are his photos a document of Pueblo history. The photos that Hillers took in late 1879 to about 1881, there's a set of photos where he visited almost all the Pueblos along the Rio Grande from Taos all the way down to probably Isleta and then out west, Laguna and Acoma. They depict the Pueblos as very vital places and villages, industrious people, where you can see that it took um, people to build the pueblos, to take care of the land, the farms, and also tend to the surrounding areas. Like in some of them, you can see forests, you can see the rivers, different rivers in them, not just the Rio Grande, and how we lived in and how that, those lands and waters supported us. He may not have intended that, but it is a documentation of life a century and a half ago. How many people were living in the Pueblos around that? At that time, in the Pueblos, um, some of the Pueblos were large, like say Santo Domingo, which probably might have had a thousand people then. Some of the Pueblos are smaller, like if you look at the photo of Nambe, and Nambe might have had maybe 300 people. And what kind of crops were they growing at the time? Um, the crops that were grown at that time were the basics, the corn, the beans, you know, the vegetables, squash, that feed us. And then there was also the introduction in some of the pueblos, you'll see the wheat fields. Um, wheat was a new crop for us, as well as alfalfa. And in some of those photos, you will see those fields with that in there, or being irrigated. How are the Pueblos different from one another? Some are different um, just by the languages spoken, which um, some are standalone languages. Um, for the Pueblo that I come from, from is Santo Domingo, and my mother's from Cochiti, but they both speak Carician-based languages, so we understand each other, but we would not understand um, Zuni, we would not understand um, Nambe. We would not understand Taos. All of each of those pueblos have their own separate languages. In, and anthropologists have been talking about this for a long time, and we took it as word that Zuni was a standalone language. But now we're, be, we're coming to learn that Hamas is a standalone language. So is the Carician speaking pueblos. They are standalone languages. Um, the northern pueblos are. Tewa and Towa are standalone languages. People are sort of far apart, so it makes sense that they might have standalone languages? There were standalone languages, but we were also, I think, multilingual because mm. we did visit and intermarry and talk with each other. And I think our ancestors, and I know in fact that my grandfather could speak at least three different languages, not including Spanish and English. 
What are some of the stories these photos tell? The photos are very rich. At least when I look at them and see them, they're very rich, and that's why I like them. The photos of, say, Cochiti and I think San Ildefonso and a couple of the other photos, they show the homes, and some are multi-tiered homes, in other words, multi-story homes, but you don't see any of the modern, what we see today, any of the modern fixtures such as light poles. You don't have any of that. You see the people as they lived in the villages and as they built the villages. And it was all what I call people power, that we had to make the mud bricks, we had to make the homes, we got the vigas for our homes, for the ladders. And then when we came in, in some of the photos, you can see the ornos. And some of the ornos are at the ground level and others are on the housetops. And oh, really, I never knew that they did that. Apparently we did. And so that's, that's the thing I'm studying now is if there isn't, if there's only an orno on a housetop without a room up there, I'm wondering, okay, how did we get the bread loaves up there? that kind of thing. And the second bigger, larger question, I think, is why did we build the Ornos on the housetop? Mm -hmm. And Today, you talk about the multi-layers, the, yeah. the picture of Taos is amazing. Yes, yes. And I tried to count how many stories there were in that one. And I think there's either seven to nine. And at the, on the top story are three men. And again, those men are looking at the camera trying to figure out what's going on. In your own Pueblo Santa Domingo, there was a flood? There was a flood in 1886. So this photo taken by Hillers in about 1880 shows the old Pueblo before it was flooded and as well as the church. And then in 1886 was a flood that wiped out the church and wiped out a large portion of the Pueblo on the western side. So everybody just moved up the hill almost to where the wagons are now not quite that distance, but we moved up to that edge of, of the Pueblo. And in San Felipe, there are two mesas, but you don't see the river necessarily. The, the Pueblo is alongside the river. You have to know where that, mm. where the Pueblo is because the Pueblo of San Felipe is immediately next to the river. And the river runs, in that Hiller's photo, it probably runs along the side and then in between the two mesas. And the mesas, too, are important, too, because the mesa on the western side during the Pueblo Revolt, for all the Pueblos, there are mesas that we had to run to as places of refuge. So there are stories within those photos that are unspoken and untold, but if Pueblo people looked at them, they would know what was in that photo. Also in Jemez, you can see the different layers uh, going up to the mountains. Yeah. The Hamas photo is really rich and I like it. I think it's the one that has a little arroyo coming down from the mountains and then it goes kind of into the, into the Pueblo itself. And the Pueblo again has multi stories and you can see the mountains. Why is a visual record of this history so important? Hiller's is important because his photos show what I call the geographic features of, of the Pueblos. They give me strength. They also show how pristine and how well taken care of our Pueblos are. Now I think for Pueblo people, it augments our oral histories and the stories that we have that we can now use to show and teach our own children about what's going on. Because like say Laguna and even some of the other villages have been impacted by mining. So it's, we have that story to tell.